Hello, hello, back on Iceland and I'm driving to uh, Selfoss with uh, Tor here, which is a great opportunity to pick his brain. So Tor, the uh, eruption that uh, was going on for a little while, it stopped about 10 days ago. And um, I understand that there is now a new buildup, that the ground is moving upwards again after the deflation from the result of the last eruption. What's the story on that? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, we have the inf inflation center is in the same location as it did before. The rate of inflation is on par with what it was towards the latter end, the last inflation period. Okay. You know, that started very quickly, had a you know, high rate of inflation to begin with, and then dropped down to about two uh, millimeters per day. This one it's started shallow, exactly. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, shallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was and, steep at the beginning. And this one started yeah. at two millimeters per day, but seems to be hanging right around two millimeters per day. Okay, yeah. uh, as we speak, and uh, it's about well, three weeks now since the eruption stopped or so, or two weeks. Two weeks, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Weeks, uh, and so that, if you just look at that uh, in, in light of what we know about the behavior of, of, of certain new millennium and, and, and the Svartsengi magma, shallow magma storage, yeah. then, uh, you know, it's going to get another eruption, but it may not be until uh, December. It could be a little while, yeah, because yeah. I... It could, it could be a Christmas eruption. A Christmas eruption? How... Uh... Or, or New Year's, maybe you can get, get a, get a, a bonfire on New Year's. Because my initial thinking was that, uh, looking at the, at the initial kind of... Uh, uplift uh, I was thinking about three months or so but then of course then three months we're close to Christmas you're not wrong so um, but a new year's eruption wow I think I'll get trouble at home if I come for the eruption of Christmas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope it's I not going to be Christmas a lot of people could get in trouble if they, if they, yeah, if they spend I, uh, Christmas watching an eruption and uh, Icelandic winters are not the most fun thing anyway, so... Uh, well, they're but, okay uh, in the Reykjavik Peninsula. <laughs> okay, it's well, there's a lot of geothermal it, pools at least. Yeah, uh, and there's not that much snow and, and, but, and, you know, and if you have an eruption to warm you up and light up the, the, the sky, then it could be actually quite nice. But joking aside, let's, let's, uh, let me ask a little bit about what you think is going on in the long term, because, I mean, People have been talking about this new eruption period on the Reykjans that could last for decades to centuries and uh, that could be another major one that could actually activate the entire peninsula or the five or six systems there. What's your take on that? Because my secret hope is that after another one or two small eruptions it might just calm down and uh, the eruption might just call it a day. But uh, what's, what's your take on that? Well, this we have to do in bits. Uh, the first one, if we think about the current fires, the Sundjuku fire, yeah. which is just the eruption that had taken place on the Sundjuku uh, uh, volcanic linear. Mm -hmm. The inflation rate has been going down, but in, you know, all of 25 and even into 24, the decrease of, of, of inflation has been very small. So, it, it, but it is going down. I mean, it might be going down a fraction of a millimeter on average between periods. Mm -hmm. It is going down. If it keeps doing that, in the end, you know, you, you're going to get to uh, uh, inflow rates that are not sustainable in, in, in the sense of keeping that conduit open, which is feeding magma from the deeper uh, magma storage yes. to the shallow magma storage. And when that, that day comes, then Soon, nuclear fires is going to be over. Mm. It, I mean, I was hoping that it would be over by now. I was sort of anticipating that at the rate of 24, that it would be over by summer 25. But there was a secret hope on my part as well, because it's starting to get a little expensive. All but, that but, research, but, so. but na nature has, you know, different ideas about how to play the game. And and uh, and outsmarts us every every time. So yeah, nature is a bit of a yeah. Uh, we could uh, get one more eruption. We could get two or three or four or five more eruptions. This could last until twenty six or twenty seven or even twenty eight. Who knows? When we think of uh, when we think of uh, oops, there's a little bit of a bumpy road ahead. Dong 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 dong. Yeah. So apologies, but uh, yeah. The uh, Krafla fires. Uh, remind me that that was that was a bit longer, wasn't it? A couple of hours, uh, uh, the period of unrest there lasted for a decade. Yeah, I was about to say, it was about 10 years, I recall. Yeah. So, and then and there's, there is a, a 
nine years of eruption, and there were at least in two of those years of two eruptions. So, I mean, we may have had 11 eruptions total, something, something of that nature. I'm hesitant to draw an equal sign between the Kapla fires and what's happening in Sunjungut, and in period, what is happening actually in in the Reykjanes Peninsula is simply because these are slightly different tectonic situations. Yes, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to say it's the same tectonic environment because the one is a, is, is a rift and the other one is a, yeah. is a, a so, leaky but, but if you think if you think of this in, but it, nonetheless, the duration it's, is it's, interesting. It's, 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 it's the same fundamental mechanism seems to be underlying. Mm -hmm. So if, if you if you think of uh, if, if you just take the Krapla fires and the Mivas fires of 24 to 17, 24 to 29. So that, that, that's a kind of a five-year period. The Mevatn fire. Yes, that's the, that's the, the fires that, that preceded the Krapla fires. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's 250 years between the two. But it looks like in, 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 in the, the Krapla volcanic lineament, if you like, or, 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 or the Krapla fissures, one, whatever it might be, one, mm -hmm. whatever you want to use for it, you are stretching the, the crust. Why? For a fairly long period of time, and something happens that triggers a, a release of that stress, and, mm -hmm. and basically, you know, you, you, it's just like stretching a duct tape, and then you know, you stretch it so much that you to touch it lightly, it snaps. It's like a, a little puncture. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it just goes off. Yeah, and, yeah. and then you have a period of time where you have a lot of of, of, of extensional uh, tectonics faulting and opening of fractures and all that stuff. And because the magma is in there, the magma is accumulated at death, it also comes up in the same time. Right. And you have a series of eruptions. So this is what we call fires. And in case of the Krabla fire, it lasted for a decade. In case of the Mivat fires, it lasted for five years, five to six years. You're doing exactly the same thing. In the Reykjanes Peninsula, you're stretching the plate boundary. Yes. But it's an oblique set, setting. Correct. That's the so it's, it's what they call transtensional. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're stretching it not just in opposite direction, you but sideways. Yes. Yes. So you're slipping. Slipping and opening. Yes. So. And this is why, the, you know, I, I think when you have eruption periods in, in, in Reykjavik Peninsula, now realize that. Both are exposed to the same spreading rate in the distant, in you know, in the far distance. Mm -hmm. But in the regular peninsula, you, you take it takes longer time to build up to the time of snapping. But when it snaps, it also you get a, an extended period of volcanism. Mm -hmm. So eruption <clears throat> periods in regular peninsula are three to four hundred years long, and you get activated several linear volcanic lineaments during that period of time. And it, based on what we know now, it looks like you actually activate individual linemas maybe for, you know, a few years, a few years maybe to a maximum of, 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 of 10 years. And, and So now I, I, I start to, to see that element as well, that, uh, that this graph, I have this graph of Michael Samuelson or so, the, 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 these, the, um, these episodes. Yes. Yes. And uh, I'm starting to think that, you know, on the graph, it's big blocks of color. And uh, it, it's, it's obviously not uh, allowing us the resolution to look into individual events there. And maybe it is actually fires, but many of them at different places. But they don't have to be simultaneously, because on the graph, it implies that they're all going off at the same time, because the blocks are drawn in this way. Yeah, no, no, they, they don't go the same way. Basically, what they just represent, you know, the period of er eruptions when, when you had eruption on particular volcanic lineament that you could only have had like two in one in the beginning and one at the yes, end or exactly even, exactly that's or it. you, so you, it's you, not you, as bad as the graph makes it look like no. uh, one can perceive it this way or one yeah. can perceive it in a, in a more gloomy way uh, yeah. so, then it so would the, be a serious yeah, thing so the future is well, soon you will end at some point and then um, it might be a couple of years from now it could be tomorrow but when it ends and then we may have a pause for 50, 60 years. Yes, exactly. And, that and, then, makes sense. and then we might get activity on another volcanic lineament, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe the Krishavik lineament. But we can also have activity on there in, in two or three years' time, or even next year. 
So I mean, it, it, this, these are things we just don't know. We don't know how, you know, heterogeneous crust like we have in the Regan's Peninsula, which is, you know, multiple fractures mm -hmm. and, and, and experience multiple episodes of both volcanic activity and tectonic activity, how they respond to, you know, slight, yeah, yeah. Yeah, slightly, okay. slightly different, uh, uh, you know, stress regime, every, you know. I see, I see, I see. So, I mean, we are learning. I mean, that's the whole thing. Is that we are, we are. We, we <laughs> may know, fair, the, yes. we, we may know the crude, we may know the crude pattern. Mm -hmm. We may know, so, you know, the sort of uh, the, the sketch of the history, mm -hmm. but we don't know the details. And that's and what have, I'm figuring, and, yes. yes. The, but what's happening now in the Regis Peninsula is, of course, adding in details about what's going on and what you know went on in the past. But it is, at best, just one chapter. I or see. maybe yeah, ten. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, and uh, the other thing is that I, I hear that the uh, Klusevik, um, uh geothermal area has been increasing over the last few years. It's, it's widened apparently, so there is a higher heat flow. Yes. And, uh, and seismic activity currently is increasing on, on the Klusevik liniment. And just this morning, they had an earthquake on the Klusevik liniment within the Greater Reykjavik area. Just, just uh, outside of, that? just outside of Hamburg, three, I think it was th th magnitude three earthquake. So, you know, not trying to be cynical and anything like that. this. Seismic activity on the Krisivik swarm could lead to some activity on the Krisivik mm. lineament in very near future. And that, when, when I'm saying very near future, I mean in the next few months or, or maybe a couple of or years. Christmas, yeah. Yeah, or Christmas. <laughs> Sorry. But, but most likely is that, you know, this activity will probably sort of slow down and die out. And then, you know, five, six years or 10 years from now, it will pick up again. And, yes. So. And, and, and uh, maybe end at that time, end with an eruption. We, we simply don't know, and this is sure. the, the big uncertainty in all of these things. And people always talk about we have to be able to predict eruptions. We're far from even being close to be able to pre predict eruptions. We have probabilities, and we have scenarios yeah. that we can assign probabilities to. But being absolutely certain about things is is, is well, not maybe well, something. Well, prediction you know, to me is years, that so. you 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 can look at a set of data and say, okay, we're going to have an eruption in in on 6th of June 2026. Exactly, that's a prediction. So, and, 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 uh, and, then, and then, you know, we're going to have another one on, on 7th of July in, 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 in 2029. I don't think we're there. We're, no, we're not. No, we're not. But when we have the signals and we're getting very close to eruption, yeah, then we can say, like, we, there's going to be an eruption within in, half an hour. We, within, yes, exactly. Yeah. Once it rises up, that's easy. But, uh, I mean, that's not... That's, that's, that's not, not the challenge. That's not the prediction. Exactly. That, that, that's really a deduction from observation. Yeah, that's just an observation that that uh, you you draw a line and yeah. you extrapolate, and th this is easy in in terms of uh, making sense but of this. But to uh, give us all hope, it took the meteorologist almost two hundred and fifty years to actually produce a proper weather forecast, even though they <laughs> and started started, started trying. <laughs> In 1767, <laughs> that's when they really set out to actually obtain data to be able to uh, look and collect data uh, to be able to actually forecast the weather. And we all know that even when we even were growing up, the forecast weren't that great. It's not until we got you know good satellite coverage yes, and, yeah, yeah. and and we could really look at all these things and then we can start predict making some reasonable predictions. Predicting volcanic eruptions, is you were looking at systems which are in the subsurface. We don't see them. You see the weather by satellites. You don't see the, the what's happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day we will have, you know, tools and and, and and technology that can actually help us imaging things in such a way that we can actually see what's happening in the subsurface, and then we can start. Oh, on, real, on a real-time basis, yes. because, I mean, we can do tomography, but this takes a lot of time and you can't do it yeah, instantaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but so. I'm saying, that maybe, I mean, but it's part of the development. I mean, this mm -hmm. is like meteorology, you know, they 
developed and 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 that, that development is kind of a you know progressed at an exponential rate so I mean, it started very slow and then it gradually built up and i think volcanology is going to be similar in that sense and one day we will be you know be able to predict mm -hmm. eruptions and even predict earthquakes but for that to happen we need to be able to see in real time into the subsurface and identify I mean, the signals that we're getting from that we have to identify those yes. with particular processes that's right we need to be sure what the signals mean i mean a tremor can be all sorts of things and uh this is where we're not clear yeah, we can't even agree on what what would generate tremor that's I mean, what i'm saying I mean, be all sorts a lot of, of people things, have so. some consensus here. like it's it's you know some vibration you know in the in, in the in the conduit but is it because you are forming bubbles or is it because the bubbles are bursting or is That's it right. is it because it's flowing so fast? Mm. So tricky, tricky things. Yes. So anyway, we better wrap up because yep. we have arrived in Salesforce already. And uh, thank you, Tor, for your explanations. And uh, I hope that you found that useful. As you see, there is still a lot of work to do. And um, I think secretly we're all hoping that the eruptions uh, on the Sundnuka are going to be over very soon. I think I could certainly do with a break from looking at all the yeah. rocks. And, uh, and yeah. if, if there was a few years until the next one comes up or so, I, I would think that would be great from a, from a kind of researcher point of view. But, well, nature is nature. And, I would appreciate uh, that. I would appreciate that as well. Okay, anyway. Bye-bye, everybody. And uh, talk to you soon again. Bye.